Okay, in this video I just want to cover um, some of the problems associated with melting high temperature metals. Uh, if you've seen any of my other videos, I've been trying with um, oxygen, propane, furnaces, that sort of thing. And uh, we recently built a <coughs> quite a nice little forge uh, to melt high temperature metals in. Uh, one of the issues though has been crucibles and moulds. Um, this uh, type of mould is probably, uh, this type of crucible is probably quite familiar to you. It's a salamander graphite clay type crucible, but in a coal fired forge, <coughs> this is the kind of thing that happens to it, and the um, inside has been equally uh, battered by the, the heat and, and the acidic gases of the forge. So, uh, what I wanted to do is to just show you if you were interested in melting these type of high temperature metals um, a possible workaround involving a, a high temperature crucible. Obviously there are many ways of making moulds in which to cast such a crucible. I've chosen a universal one coat plaster uh, because of its uh, various properties it has. It, it, doesn't crack, it's easy to sand, and uh, also uh, I think it's British gypsum joint cement, <coughs> again for its uh, ease of sanding and, and the ability to achieve, achieve a very smooth finish uh, for for the casting of the mould. Um, I'll also, also I'll be using um, a refractory castable uh, cement which uh, is rated at 1700 degrees and uh, I'm hoping that this will, will do the job. Um, if you would like to look at uh, the forge, a furnace uh, and, and other things I've been experimenting with, obviously please feel free to check out other videos on the channel. Um, equally, if you find this video interesting, please subscribe. Thank you. Hello there. Um, I just wanted to make this to uh, share some of the um, lessons I've been learning regarding melting some of these metals. Uh, if you've been watching other videos, you'll know that what I'm trying to do is create some, some alloys in order to uh, build a, a usable heat engine to work from uh, waste heat. But I wanted to just um, <coughs> deal with the problems associated with melting iron. Um, you may or may not know Cast iron, relatively easy to melt. We're talking about sort of uh, <coughs> 1300 and something degrees to melt cast iron, so it's relatively straightforward in a gas furnace using a crucible. However, pure iron being um, 1500, <coughs> a lot harder to achieve. So, what I've had to uh, resort to is making my own crucibles. Uh, I want to just briefly share that with you. Um, what we're trying to do is effectively make a crucible in this type of shape, so that we have a conical post resting on the air vent, um, and then the bowl of it in which to melt our metal. So the trick with making a mould like this um, <coughs> is using this material, universal one coat plaster. So what you'll want to do is get yourself some suitable plastic bottles, with a funnel shape, this is from a lemonade bottle, uh, and cast a former using the universal one coat cement. Then, using <coughs> this feather stuff, ready mix joint cement, <coughs> quite expensive, it only comes in these big tubs, I believe. Just coat the outside of the plaster with it, leave it to dry. When it's fully dry, rub it down gently with, I would recommend, 150 grit sandpaper, okay? So having done that, paint it, or pretty ordinary cheap gloss white spray paint, and leave it all to dry. Then, reasonably liberal coat of Vaseline over the whole thing, um, and you're ready to cast off that. Uh, so this was, cast in a one gallon, uh, just an oil container with the top cut off, <coughs> again using the universal one coat, and obviously this was inside it with a piece of wood screwed across the top so that it was resting on the rim of the container. Once the plaster had set, 
cut off the plastic and leave it to dry out as long as you possibly can. Then simply using a jack saw, cut through the whole thing. It's a bit of effort trying to cut through it as accurately as possible. And then again, going back to the joint cement, just with a thin application, just to even out, take out any um, dinks, lumps and bumps, particularly when you saw through, it can be an uneven face. Just smear it over. I use a just a palette knife from the kitchen. Obviously, I get permission first. Smear it over. Again, leave it to completely dry. In this instance, just to show you what the so that so that was sort of half of the the inner form that came out. And uh, obviously, there I've chiselled it out. Um, as I was chiselling it, the whole piece pretty much came out in one go. So that was great. There, that's the uh, usefulness of the Vaseline. So what we're going to do next <coughs> is, having uh, sanded and sprayed the face and inside of there, both of them, uh, what we will be doing, a liberal application of Vaseline on both meeting faces and inside. On the meeting faces, the Vaseline will help eliminate any gaps. They will then go together. And obviously we're going to need something to create the void, otherwise we'll just end up with a solid thing. And here, simply plaster filled, uh, a suitable plastic bottle, suitable diameter filled with plaster, and the same process of then covering with our trusted joint cement, rubbing down and spraying. Right. So this is screwed to this piece of 2 by one When you screw the wood to plaster like this, um, make sure the hole is bigger than the thread of the screw and simply then fill the hole with a little bit of the joint cement and, and push the screws in rather than screwing them. And if you just drill a hole and screw the screw in, you're likely to crack the plaster. So this will then sit inside uh, the main mould and give us the shape we want. I so what I'm using is 1700 degree refractory cast dense refractory cement. Okay, <clears throat> castable refractory cement. Now it is full of these small chips, so what you'll need to do uh, is using a sieve with around about a four millimeter hole, sieve out the chips, leaving you with something Still with plenty of aggregate in it, but leaving just the finer aggregate behind. If you don't do this, then when you try and pack the mould and put the, 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 the cement in there, um, the likelihood is that you, you'll get pieces of the aggregate trapping against the walls and resulting in these voids. Obviously, that seriously weakens the integrity of the crucible. Uh, just a quick mention, I have been using a firm by me cement through a firm called uh, castrykilns.co.uk. I found them very helpful. Uh, they're on the web, obviously. Uh, and uh, the chap running it, James, was quite amenable to a phone call and um, uh, advice uh, about the project. Right, so we're going to move on with this, mix up the cement, pour it in the mould, and then, uh, <coughs> well, obviously we're going to, going to tape these together so they don't split apart. What we're going to use is we're going to use um, my dear wife's washing machine uh, on the spin cycle as a way of vibrating this, driving the air out and, and giving us the, uh, the most compact crucible we can. Okay, I just want to cover some of the, um, the, the reason why we use, I'm using the conical shape uh, at the bottom of the crucible. I'll just show you inside the forge. Um, this is a uh, three inch pipe coming up, but this is um, an air vent I cast again from the 1700 degree refractory cement. And that's worked very well. That's had several burns and is holding up beautifully. Um, the cast iron drilled plate that we were using <coughs> before uh, was um, beginning to melt and uh, there was 
too many holes and it was drifting out. Um, just out of interest, I'll, I'll put a link at the bottom of the video just showing how myself and Jerry, the chief engineer, made this forge in case you're interested. Um, so the conical bottom to the crucible rests here in the middle. The air flows up round it and when the lid is on the crucible and the coal is piled high, that means that the uh, the metal we're trying to melt is effectively right at the heart of the heat. Um, if you just have a flat bottom crucible, it tends to fall down, block the air vents, and you really you don't get the melt. Okay, well here we are. Um, I've obviously already done this before, just uh, to show you what I did was slip the tape, and insert the pallet knife in the crack, leave it up, and relatively easily I was able to remove the two halves of the mould. Um, as you can see there is some, some sticking and damage. I, I, I feel that I can uh, just fill, rub down and recoat those. Um, the post was tricky to get out. Um, you need to take it out whilst this is slightly, uh, it's not fully set, give it a wiggle and pull it out. And I think that what I would do in the future is um, use a, a, a wax <coughs> in a form that I can then just melt out. However, this is looking quite good, pretty smooth, high temperature crucible. I've also cast a small lid with a hole in the middle to allow um, escape of gases and that will just sit on there. Uh, and hopefully we'll get to, to be able to melt, <coughs> well I'm looking to be uh, wanting to go for about half a kilogram in here and uh, we'll see if we can get that uh, casting of that billet of alloy that we can then work and uh, use in the construction of the heat engine. Thanks for watching and uh, if you uh, feel able to subscribe, if this has been interesting and useful to you, I'd be most grateful because uh, subscriptions obviously mean that you get a little more exposure on YouTube and uh, yeah.